What's going on, beautiful people? It's the kid Jay Nolan here, and I'm gonna talk to y'all today about this little riff or issue or feud, whatever you want to call it, that's going on between Monique and DL Hughley. Apparently, they had a show out in Detroit at the Fox Theater, and there seemed to be um, some sort of discrepancy about who was going up when, contracts and things of that nature. So, um, let's get right into it. So last night, Monique took the stage during her performance and she completely aired out D.L. Hughley and not just D.L. Hughley, but also the promoters that put together the comedy show featuring both of them on the lineup. She gets on stage and she says, you know what? Y'all don't understand what it took for me to get on stage tonight. Y'all don't know what I'd be going through. So I'm going to let y'all know exactly what it took for me to get on this stage tonight because y'all promoters got me effed up. They got me all the way effed up. She goes on to say, hey, the thing about it is I'm all about my contracts. You can say whatever you want. You can feel however you want. But when it comes down to that contract, we can't dispute that. She signed on the paperwork with the understanding that it said she was the headliner for that show. However, it she started going in on D.L. Hughley, basically saying that he did not want to do the show if he was not headlining, right? So she's basically saying, yo, the promoters came to me, they give me the contract, I sign it, you know, I, I agreed to whatever money, I come to do the show, but the paperwork says that I'm headlining. She says, I've been performing, doing comedy in this industry for 30 years, she don't open up for nobody, right? And I'm sure D.L. Hughley feels the same about his career. However, you gotta look at the promoter and be like, well, what's the deal with that? Is she the headliner or is she not right are y'all are y'all booking two different people telling them the same thing giving them the same contract are they really co-headliners is that what this is because clearly that was not relayed properly right so she says dl hughley was like if i'm not headlining the show i'm not performing at all she goes on to call <laughs> dl hughley uh, a whole litany of different names and you know but she then goes on to say, y'all don't understand that I have a history with this man, right? I always thought we were cool. He sat at my table, but I go on his radio show in the past and he going to ask me this quick. We had a good interview. Then at the end of the interview, they want to play a game. Would you rather? Um, she says they proceed to ask her, would you rather your husband um, have sexual relations with Lee Daniels with protection or Corinne Stephens without or something like that. Just a weird question. And she didn't understand why that even came up, which I can completely understand. Why would you ask somebody that? Like, that's not even funny. Like if you're, if your interest is in being funny, you didn't even succeed. Right. So then she also says that over the last couple of years, DL Hughley has gone on, uh, like full on tours, basically talking about, what Monique is not and what she's not worth. And, you know, ever since the whole Netflix situation, the Lee Daniels and all of those things, the controversy that's been surrounding Monique, she's basically saying that uh, D.L. Hughley has made it his business to go anywhere with a microphone or anywhere that will listen to him to basically down talk her. So she's fed up with having to deal with this because to her knowledge, she ain't never really had no issues with him. Now, D.L. Hughley has turned around and said, um, he basically said no four times to even working with her prior to this whole situation. Um, he turned, basically said he turned down this opportunity, this, this show four times, but against his better judgment, he decided to be a part of it anyway. Um, he thought that people were going to just come out and get to see a comedy show. So he basically comes out and says, well, people came to laugh, not hear about your contract. Then he goes on to say, well, uh, before it was Lee Daniels fault. It was Oprah's fault. It was Netflix fault. It was all of these different people. I guess now it's my turn. So now he's basically using her past against her saying, you complain about everything. You complain about everybody. So now it's my turn to be the bad guy, which I think honestly, there may be some merit to what he's talking about, but I think at this point it's an easy cop out because she has so much history of being what people might identify as difficult or feel like she's hard to work with or 
you know, don't cross Monique. She going she going to tell on you. She going she going to out you. She going to put you on front street, which maybe that's true. You know what I mean? However, it does not absolve people of their wrongdoing. And sometimes that's what people like to do. What do they call that? Gaslighting? Where it's like uh, you try to use misnomers and you misdirect the conversation to use other situations or other things to basically avoid the actual topic at hand. You know what I'm saying? So he's basically going to use her past against her. Like, well, she lashed out at all of these people. So now she's lashing out at me. She don't have no marriage. She don't have no reason as to why. So I guess I'm just, it's just my turn, which like I said, would absolve you of wrongdoing. If you, uh, if you put up a fight with her being the headliner, cause you didn't feel like maybe she shouldn't have been the headliner. Maybe you feel like it should have been you, whatever the case may be. Right. Um, then let that be what the issue is. And you can just stand on that. I don't feel like she should have been the headliner. If that's how you felt, come out and say that don't divert from the original point and be like, Oh, she's just mouthing off. Cause that's what she does. I think that takes away the actual issue. Not to say that, like I said, not to say there's nothing right about what he's saying. I think everybody has to agree to a certain extent. Like, yeah, Monique is a live wire. She is unpredictable. She is somebody that, um, if at any moment she feels disrespected or feels like something is not being taken into consideration in her favor, she's going to get angry. She's going to speak out about it. I mean, we've seen that. However, it does not mean that you could just do anything to somebody and then be like, well, I know what you're going to do. So I guess this should have been expected, right? Because now you're using that person's history. You're using that person, all of those things against them without actually entertaining why this person is doing what they're doing, right? Because everything should be taken on a case by case basis. Yes, she may have done those things, but that doesn't mean that you didn't do what she's claiming, right? Now, for me personally, I do understand how entertainment works. I understand how it goes with talent negotiations and things of that nature. Of course, I've never done anything to the magnitude of what Monique and D.L. Hughley um, are doing. But I do understand how somebody could feel like, hey, I deserve to be the headliner. D.L. Hughley, um, as far as I know, has been a much more active comedian over the course of maybe the past five years, right? When you look at somebody's history, you're going to look to the most recent time. You're not going to go look 20 years and be like, oh, this was so great. We're going to book you now. Yeah, that happens. But when it comes down to who you're going to pay more or who's going to get more time on stage or who people are coming to see, you're going to compare, okay, this person has been still accumulating a new audience, a new generation of people coming out to see them. So maybe this person may deserve to be the headliner. Maybe that's what uh, D.L. Hughley's perspective was on it. Now, I talked to my girl about this, and she was like, well, people haven't seen Monique in so long. There's been so much controversy surrounding her that maybe this comeback show would be something that she deserves to get the headlining spot for it because maybe all of those things contributed to the ticket sales. Maybe it would have been a smaller show had... Monique not been involved. Maybe it wouldn't have been at the the uh, the Fox Theater. Maybe it would have been at a, a smaller venue if Monique wasn't coming back and people wanted to hear what she had to say and hear what she had to talk about because she's been gone. Right. So I do understand both of those perspectives. I'm just here to talk about it. I'm here to get y'all's perspective. I want y'all to let me know how y'all feel about this situation down below in the comments. Um, you know, of course, normally I talk about music business and music uh, issues on this channel, but I feel like it's close enough. This is entertainment. It's dealing with talent and it's dealing with negotiations and stuff like that. So all of these things happen both in music and comedy and all forms of entertainment. So I feel like this is, um, definitely still relevant to what we talk about here. But like I said, let me know what y'all think down below in the comments. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel, um, comment down below some things that you might want me to actually talk about. I could take suggestions too. You know what I mean? doesn't mean that I'm going to do it, but I will take it into consideration. And if I feel passionately enough about it, I will make a video. Okay. So much love and respect to y'all, man. I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.